I'll say. Yeah, well, uh, yes. I'm quite partial to my cricket jumpers. Well, so. Send us some pictures in, Christine, so we can have a look at you and see what you look like, and then we can pass judgment and live on air, can't we? <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. do that now. No, I wouldn't either. She'll end up doing us both in, won't she? So, anyway, uh, next track. Uh, again, this chap in 76 was an, a huge star by now. He started off in the faces in 71, and he was, he was releasing. He released uh, in 75 an album called Atlantic Tr- Crossing, and in 76 he released another great album called A Night on the Town. And this next track we're going to play, it was called The Killing of Georgie. Now it was originally in two parts, parts one and parts two. Um, and I think he just spliced them both together, it just sound, sounds good, better. Uh, the story about this, apparently it's based on a true event. Uh, Rod said, that basically the song's about uh, a gay man in, in New York who gets murdered. And Rod said he, he had a lot of gay friends, but there was this guy who used to follow the faces. He was really p- close to Rod and uh, Ian McLachlan, or Mac as he was known. And I think he got murdered yeah. in 74. So I think Rod wrote this song around that. I think that's a story that I've heard. Uh, but it's a great song. This got to number two in the, the charts. And I'd like to dedicate this to Pat and to my auntie Chris and Uncle Alan. Big Rod Stewart fans. So this is The Killing of Georgie, parts one and two, by the wonderful Rod Stewart. Just pushed his luck a little too far that night. 
sight of blood dispersed the gang. A crowd gathered, the police came, an ambulance screamed to halt on 53rd and 3rd. George's life ended there, but I ask who really cares? George once said to me, and I quote, he said, never wait or hesitate, get in kids before it's too late, you may never get another chance, cause youth's a mask, but it don't last, live it long and live it fast, Georgie was a friend of mine. Rod Stewart with the Killing of Georgie parts 1 and 2 going out to Pat and to my auntie Chris and Uncle Alan and I hope you enjoyed that one right Simon it's like the show I said something a, a musical event happened in 76 that changed music forever yes this was a seismic event um basically okay I'll start as I know how the story went on in 74 75 Malcolm McLaren who was just like a Svengali producer uh, or a manager, sorry, uh, was in. New, he was managing the New York Dolls, and once he finished, he come back to London and he hooked up with a lady called Vivian Westwood, and they opened a clothes shop. I think it was uh, on the what's that well, called? Kind of, no, kind of, Cannaby Street. Street. I think yeah. it was on Cannaby Street or up that area that way in London, and they called the shop was called Sex, and Vivian Westwood had her own unique style of clothing. Uh, involving safety pins and rips, you know, uh, yeah. tartan trousers, uh, or leather trousers, just a unique. And a lot of kids started hanging around the shop. And McLaren thought, I'll take on the music industry here. So he signed up uh, Steve Cook, uh, sorry, Paul Cook on drums, Steve Jones on guitar, Glenn Matlock on bass. And John Lydon or Johnny Rotten on lead vocals. And before they became famous, they appeared on the Bill Grundy show. You remember that, Simon? Yeah, I don't think he ever worked again after that. No, I don't think he did. did. And a few he was words. encouraging them to swear. He was, wasn't yeah, he was. And they swore. I think this was going out at tea time. Yeah. And the next day, the pa- it was all over the front of the papers. It was the Pistols now, it, the, they were Big famous. Time, they? Yeah. 
and they brought out a record. Now, I know you own this record, Simon, because yes. you've got it up proudly in, in your hallway. I have, yes. I'm in the UK. Yes. But the, the, the one about the, uh, the one on the hallway is it's on the EMI label. Right. And it, they signed for EMI for only one day. Right. So EMI produced thousands and thousands and thousands, probably 100,000 of these records, right? But because they, wasn't, they pulled out of the contracts, they had to skip them all. Right. So, so they're worth a few bob then. If you've got one now, yeah, they are pretty rare, I believe. So I'm lucky to have one that's never been played. But like I said, this, this was a seismic event because music was never the same. As bands were just got swept away, the progressive rock movement was stopped in its tracks. And all these new young bands come out based on guitar, bass, drums and vocals. Music had gone back to its basics again. Uh, the punk flame flickered very, very brightly, but only briefly. By the end of 77, it had more or less gone. Yeah. You know, and you was left with post-punk groups yeah. and the, what was called New Wave. But you've always got to give credit to the Pistols for starting this off. Uh, so I'm going to play this. Uh, it's not my favourite Pistols track. Yeah. But it's the first one they did, uh, and just for that and for what followed this, uh, you've got to give this music, this song, credit. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's one of the most significant songs in the history of rock music. Yeah, I'd like to dedicate this to my quiz mate, uh, quiz partner, Coe, Paul Coleman. Yes. I know he's a big fan, and also to Tony Shepard. Tony, right, was, is one of the Pistols' biggest fans. He knows the history of the Sex Pistols better than anybody. Well, he'll know a bit about that record. He will, yeah, yeah, he yeah. will, yeah. So I think Tony will have a copy. Us. He will yeah, have a copy of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, to Tony and to Coe, this is for you. This is the Sex Pistols and Anik in the UK. <laughs> Thank you. 